So did you think that sugar just was gonna make you fat? If you eat too much of it, well, you might want to think again. The trick with sugar is though, it creeps up on you. It little by little, I was increasing inflammation and I was actually getting fatter. Sugar isn't just there to hijack your hormones, but it hijacks your brain, it hijacks your mood, it hijacks your health. It's kind of a recipe for disaster. So did you think that sugar just was gonna make you fat if you eat too much of it? Well, you might want to think again. Sugar will not only make you fat, but it may also mess with your hormones, mess with your brain, mess with your mood. Because sugar in excess can affect your testosterone levels, amongst other things. It can affect the way you think, it's gonna upset your insulin, and it's gonna throw off your own blood sugar. So how does sugar create havoc on your hormones? Sugar will tend to spike your insulin. And when you spike your insulin, this can suppress testosterone and can raise or trigger an increase in cortisol. So it's important that everything goes into balance. Now I know there are some diets out there. Uh, there's this new sugar diet where in some cases you're trying to avoid or eat certain sugars at certain times. Look, there's a carnivore diet which removes lots of sugar. You don't have any sugar in your diet or less than three grams of carbs. I don't like diets full stop. I think everyone eats in a certain way and if you eat balanced that's fine. Obviously there may be certain cases where for instance keto diet may help epileptics and there are certain times in which you would have a certain diet based on medical conditions. So it's got to be sustainable. The trick with sugar is though it creeps up on you. It's funny I used to have a cup of coffee, cappuccino or like a latte or just just a, just a, a coffee and, and a bit of milk and, and a couple years ago I would notice oh, I'm gonna get some biscuits, I'm gonna get some digestive biscuits or I'm gonna have these lovely nans biscuits that were a little chocolate chip. You don't realize there's a lot of hidden sugar in there. And with all that hidden sugar, little by little, I was increasing inflammation and I was actually getting fatter. And it was amazing when I cut back on that amount of sugar, just removing that bit of the diet. It wasn't anything like a super diet I was gonna focus on. It was just like, hey, let's remove all the extra bits of sugar that I don't need. I mean, likewise, I would you know, have yogurt, but if I added honey into every time I had yogurt, that was gonna be a lot of extra sugar for me. So again, it's about moderation and not having this kind of control you, but it's very easy to do because I mean, I'm telling you how the coffee and I would enjoy the dipping my, my biscuits in there and uh, you get that extra sweetness. I mean, who doesn't love it? It's, it's quite addictive, but your body doesn't really love it. And you'll find that over time, you know, it could raise your triglycerides, it can make you fatter. It could contribute to what's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. All of that is kind of a recipe for disaster. So it's easier said than done. And I, there are tools out there that, that can help mitigate the effects of sugar. One starts with a bit of willpower. And if you don't have the willpower, or if you've been on this cycle of eating a lot of sugar, there are, are tools. One of the tools are the GLP agonists that kind of remove that desire, that drive to have sugar. It, it can help, not to mention it can normalize and stabilize your blood sugar and, and improve your insulin response. So sometimes that's needed and it doesn't have to be a high dose. It depends on the individual and how the doctor prescribes it. But yeah, GLP-1 agonists, like uh, tazepatide can be very, very beneficial if you potentially have a sugar addiction. And there are other tools, metformin, some of the gliflozins, like dapagliflozin actually removes the sugar from your blood. So it's almost like you're on keto. So if you have dapagliflozin, you get prescribed, I believe like 10 milligrams of this. Any sugar that you, you do eat will be excreted in the urine. Now this isn't a, always a long-term strategy, but it may help get you on track. Uh, the, on the dapagliflozin, there may be risks of urinary tract infections in some people, depending on the dose. So probably mitigating your sugar is a good plan overall and not relying on, on medications. But there is help if you needed to help the medications. You know, elevated uh, sugar, increasing your HbA1c, that's a measure of your blood sugar over time. And that's a good blood test, a biomarker to have, as well as your fasting glucose, as well as your fasting insulin level. It gives you a picture of what's going on metabolically with your management of sugar, but stopping the ingestion of it is, is preference. And it's not just sugar, like something sweet. I mean, there's fructose in fruits. There's also some of the starches. You know, too many simple sugar starches can affect your, your blood sugar. So we want to manage and mitigate all, all of this. And the other part, the other thing to consider is when you have a short burst of sugar, you can also get the crash that follows, which isn't great for your brain health and doesn't make
make you feel good either. And it kind of dampens your mood and your overall energy level. I suppose one way to mitigate if you do have something sugary uh, might be to go for a walk or to exercise shortly after. At least it's not getting all stored up in, into your liver and affecting you that way. You know, there have been studies that show chronic sugar intake has been linked with some depression and potentially anxiety. So uh, whilst it tastes nice, you know, consistent chronic intake almost compels you to have more may not be good for your, for your brain or your mental health. So that's something to keep in mind. And part of the reason what is, is the sugar can also upset your gut microbiome and it can also you know, change that, that natural flora in your gut as well as causing inflammation. And that's what we're trying to stop is this inflammation in the body that is so disruptive to your health. So the takeaway is sugar isn't just there to hijack your hormones, but it hijacks your brain, it hijacks your mood, it hijacks your health. And so getting that under control in a balanced way I think is one of the, the most optimal ways you can go about improving your quality of life and eventually your hormones and if you can't get those managed it's always good to see a healthcare professional like Balance My Hormones we offer online doctor consultations and we also have a pharmacy that can help support you if you need certain medications including any kind of weight loss medications like our GLP-1 agonists or testosterone treatment if you are uh, found deficient so if you have questions need uh, or have comments really about what your thoughts are. I know the GLP-1 agonists are quite controversial, but uh, they're also very beneficial and show potentially life extending properties as well as health extending properties. So, you know, leave comments below to let us know what your thoughts are. I mean, have you had a problem with eating too much sugar? Because it does creep up on you and it's been talked about for years. It's nothing new. I'm not saying anything new other than just something that you've got to be aware of. So let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and to your health. We'll see you next time.